So our last speaker before we get into the panel discussion is going to be Robert S. Fish, who is president uh, of Netovations and uh, in the IEEE Communications Society is VP of Industry and Standards. Yeah, okay. So thank you. Um, what I'm going to try to do is talk a little bit about uh, turning some of the technology we've been talking about with regard to FOG into standards and how IEEE might play a role in, in doing that. Um, so as uh, Tom mentioned, I'm the Vice President for Industry and Standards in the IEEE Communications Society and actually I'm a member of a number of IEEE societies as well, other societies as well. And um, IEEE in some sense from the perspective of standardization is unique in the sense that um, IEEE combines both the technical depth of all our societies, so the computer society, I'm also a member of that one, uh, communications, uh, consumer electronics, and a variety of others with the sta a world-class standardization structure. So typically standards organizations have, uh, or uh, professional organizations are one or the other. They're either technical organizations or they're standardization organizations, but IEEE does both. And uh, we can create a good ecosystem, which I'm trying to show here, uh, that can essentially enable a nascent technology like FOG, if you'll excuse the use of the word nascent, um, which uh, still has a large research component into it, uh, to develop along a timeline uh, all the way into uh, an adopted and market adopted industry standard. So here we can see the various phases. Let's see if I can get this laser to laze. Okay, do we have, a, do we have any laser specialists here? Maybe not. Okay. Well, I'm just going to start at the left-hand side and go to the right. Um, oh, there we go. Maybe a little bit here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, sort of at the beginning of a of a, uh, uh, a technology, we can think of a conceptual phase. IEEE at this point will be putting on workshops and academic conferences, and for instance, some of the publications like. Uh, the IEEE Communications Magazine that uh, uh, Meng Cheng mentions earlier. And then uh, as the, the technology moves into a pre-competitive stage, basically, we have research and study groups um, and uh, IEEE technical activities like the Future Directions Group can be taking a lead and, and uh, pushing that forward. And then finally, we have within the IEEE a standards association that has liaisons to all the technical societies, or at least many of them, and push that into uh, actual standardization activities. And uh, finally, uh, industry forums. And industry forums, a good example, of course, is the FOG Consortium. So IEEE is, as a member of the board of the FOG Consortium, uh, playing a role there as well. Well, OK. Now, uh, what are the, the, the characteristics of the IEEE standardization activity? It's an open process so that anyone can join. Um, it's uh, based on uh, World WTO, that's World Trade Organization core principles, meaning it's uh, consensus-based, uh, it's fair, it's, well, there are a variety of them I'll go into. Um, the IEEE provides a, a set of e-tools uh, for facilitating the the uh, uh, standardization process, and there's global participation, so it's not only one country or one region. So all of these activities can uh, take place. And so we generally in IEEE think of it as a uh, market-driven model of uh, standardization rather than a country-specific or country-driven uh, model. Okay. Now, what's a, a little interesting about the uh, IEEE standardization process that we might use in something like FOG is that uh, we have three different kinds of groups. So on the one hand, um, sometimes when you get together and think that you're going to start standardization, it turns out that you haven't actually solved all the research problems yet. And so we provide a mechanism within IEEE, within COMSOC, for instance, uh, to create uh, a research group that uh, identifies issues that stand in the way of getting to this uh, a standardization. 
And uh, the output of that might be vision documents or research reports, a variety of white papers or other kinds of things that may be published. But in general, the group works to solve uh, research issues before starting standardization. The second possibility, uh, the second step really, is what we call a study group. So a study group essentially outlines the scope of a standardization project. Um, it only exists for about three to six months, typically. Um, and the output is actually the request to actually start a, a standards group. So in this period of time in a study group, you try to uh, figure out the scope, figure out who's going to participate, figure out the general timeline, and put together a proposal to actually get IEEE to support the standardization. And then finally, we have a working group. That is the basic uh, standardization activity. And I'll say a little bit more about what happens within a working group in a moment. But this is where the actual technical contributions come in and the actual standards document would be written. Um, now, for instance, FOG, the FOG Consortium, is producing uh, a reference architecture document today. Um, and they're in the last stages of doing that. And so the question is, well, how would you turn uh, a document like that into a standard? Um, or uh, how would you contrast what you would do with uh, such a reference document with starting from scratch for a standard, for instance, in some other FOG-related area, like um, Tom mentioned, uh, some of the security aspects. So really, there are two different processes. One, if you had a reference architecture document and you thought it was suitable for standardization, IEEE could simply adopt it. That means it doesn't change the wording, but it uh, goes through the IEEE standardization process and uh, it's made available globally and uh, other people, other standards bodies and countries can adopt that standard. In the uh, other case where there needs to be standards development that actually occurs, um, then you start with the working group, like uh, I said back here on this slide. There we go. OK, good. Um, and so both of those. And we see in this circle here essentially what the circle of uh, uh, is for any standard. So you, I can't read the slide there. But uh, um, you initiate the project. You get the working group together. You draft the standard. It's balloted. Uh, there's certain rules about representation and balloting so that uh, all concerned groups get to uh, ballot a standard. And then the, uh, the standard is approved. And then after a period of time, uh, a, a few years, uh, the, the standards are, uh, uh, have to be maintained. And they're either improved or they're uh, shut down for a standard that no longer serves a purpose. Finally, so uh, for adoption, I guess I've, I've talked about this. I'm not going to go into all the detail here, but uh, for the, an adoption of something like a FOG reference architecture, we would uh, initiate that. We develop a draft. We do a sponsor ballot, um, and uh, then the approval process would would occur. And um, let's see, did we talk about? Who gets to do that? Yeah, I'll, I'll get to do that in a second. So it, this is what the stage is. It can be relatively quick, um, which is something that uh, industry consortium are, are often concerned about. And uh, uh, it gets, gets your standard pretty quickly. In the case where you want to start a standard from scratch, uh, you're doing essentially the same processes. But usually, the technical development stage can take uh, six months to two years. And so uh, that's tech uh, typically a, a longer process than an, an adoption process. Now, one thing that uh, uh, people often concern themselves about is who gets to work in a standards group and how does the technology get adopted? Um, it's not surprising, I think, for you to understand that for many industries, um, the creation of intellectual property, patents, uh, and copyright code and a variety of things is quite important. And many companies, for instance, would dearly love to have their intellectual property adopted into, into a standard. And so in order to do that, you have to get the intellectual property voted uh, to be adopted by a working group. And uh, there are a couple of different ways that that's done in IEEE.
Panasonic.